Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sports Design School. Now if this is your first time on our channel, welcome. Every single week we put out tutorials, tips, and advice for aspiring sports graphic designers. Now today's video I'm going to be breaking down something that a lot of you guys have requested recently. And it's a breakdown of how to get this lighting effect in your images. I'm going to be walking through step by step and showing you everything in the process so that you can recreate this look on whatever image you would like. So let me go ahead and dive into the video. So here I have this image of Anthony Edwards that I pulled off of Google and you can tell the image looks pretty flat. There's not a lot of dimension and if you were to use this in a design, your design might look good, but without the lighting it still looks flat. So I want to walk through the process of adding that lighting into your cutout to make it feel more three dimensional. So I have a little bit of a process I go through when recreating this. For starters, I'm just going to duplicate this by holding alt and dragging down just so we have a copy in case we need it later. So now I have this original cutout that we have here and I'm just going to start off by going up to filter, camera raw filter. Now camera raw filter is a great starting place because it allows us to tweak this image in whatever way we want. Whether it's playing around with the color or adding some clarity, we really can fine tune the image before adding on top of it. So I usually go about doing this by starting off adding some clarity. Clarity is one of the most simple things you can do to really make an image pop and stand out. And so we're going to add some clarity, a little bit of texture. Now just for clarification, these are by no means precise like measurements. I'm literally just clicking and seeing what looks good. So there's not a science to how far you slide the slider. Now I'm going to play around with the shadows and highlights a little bit, so I might turn up the shadows to give it more of an HDR kind of feel, and then do the same with the highlights. And you can already see there's great progress within this image. Uh, let's see about the exposure. The exposure looks pretty good. And I'm going to scroll down now a little bit. I want to turn up my vibrance just to make sure it's a nice saturated image. Um, and then that looks good for these sliders. Also you can tell this image is a little noisy so what I want to do is go down to detail. I'm going to increase my sharpening just a tad but then also add some noise reduction and color noise reduction. And that looks pretty good to me. We can hit OK and you can see we've already started to make our image stand out just a little bit more. But that was just the first step. We want to then go in and add on top of this to really make our image pop. So what I like to do next is go up here and choose a levels adjustment layer. Now if you don't have this adjustments tab on your Photoshop window, you can simply go up to windows, adjustments, and that will pull up your window where you're able to select all of these great options. So like I said, we're just going to hit levels and that will automatically add a levels thing to our layers tab. And then I'm going to create a clipping mask by going over this kind of boundary between the two layers, holding alt on my computer and clicking. And what that does is it just limits our effects that we're about to apply to just this cutout. Now this levels adjustment tool, I want to change this to multiply. Now you might be thinking this doesn't look very good, but we're going to go in and add a couple things to make it more usable. I'm going to go over to this white square right here and hit alt and click. And that makes my entire screen white. So you can see this screen is white and this screen is white. Now I'm going to simply hit command I, which is an inverse. So what that does is it takes the whites and turns them to blacks. And now you can see none of our image has that weird multiply effect on top. So now we have our layer mask where we're able to brush wherever we want to. So now I'm going to bring up my brush tool. And I'm going to choose a hardness of 0%. A size of 105 looks good for right now. A couple other important settings. My flow is on 8%. Um, I might kind of fluctuate this depending on how things are looking, but 8 to 12 is around the range that I like to be in. And then I want to make sure my brush is set to white. As a reminder, our layer mask is completely black, so everywhere that we paint with our white brush, our effect will be revealed. 
So now I want to go through and simply zoom in on my image and look for areas that I can apply this multiply effect to. Now the way I usually like to do this is finding the shadows within my image to make them more pronounced. We're not trying to change the lighting in this scene. I've seen people try to do that before and if you do it incorrectly, it can look very, very wrong and feel very, very weird. I find the safest way to go about adding lighting and dimension to a scene is to simply take what's already there and enhance it. So I'm gonna go with my brush tool selected and I might de decrease my size now that I'm seeing how close we are. And I'm simply gonna take all of the shadow areas and paint them with my brush. Now you might be wondering, this isn't like a super pronounced effect, but all we're doing is essentially taking the shadows and then making them a little bit darker. This is a similar effect that you would see if you were to use a dodge and burn tool, but this is with a non-destructive way to where if you wanna tweak it after, we can, where dodge and burn, you're not able to do that. But like I said, just going through and adding some shadows, and really focusing on making those shadows a little bit more pronounced. The other great thing about this is there's no like guaranteed way of doing this. Like you can do it however you want to. So you want, if you want like super pronounced shadows, you're able to go through and do that. But if you want something a little bit more minimal, you can also scale back as much as you'd like to. So I'm simply going here on these creases in his forehead. And then we want to go through on our ears. And I find with this process, the more detailed you can get, the better the results will be. So you can go in and focus on kind of the smaller details and it really stands out. So like here on this top of his lip, and then even within his nose right here, as you can see, there's like some highlights around this point, but we want to really emphasize the shadows. Now we can go through and do the same thing with the rest of the cutout. So I'm going to go here. And these are some great shadows to be able to focus on. That's one of the reasons I chose this image in particular is I just thought there were so many different details in the lighting that would make it really great to focus on. And you can see the shading effect really is pronounced here as we're going through on his skin, on his arms. And the truth is, you can take as long or as short of amount of time as you want with this. I'm probably going to only take a few more seconds here because I don't want to take too much time for the video. But you could sit here and really go through every single detail on his jersey and everything to get your shading how you want it. So let's take a look at where we are so far. So you can see just some subtle shading in his arms and in his face. So that was our shadows within this image. Now we want to do the burn or the dodging effect, which we can do by hitting levels. Again, creating a clipping mask. And this time we're going to set it to screen. 
And you can see this is kind of the inverse of what we did with the multiply effect. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit Alt, click on the white square, hit Command I for inverse. And then now we can go back with our brush and find all of the highlights that we'd really like to make more pronounced in our image. So for starters, right here on his eyebrows, Now as you're going through, it almost seems like you're barely changing the image, like the results seem like kind of underwhelming at first, but when you go back through and look at the big picture when you're all done, like the effect is really cool. So going through on the lip, and the thing I like about this too is it's kind of foolproof. The thing is like when you're trying to like add your own shadows in and like use like a brush tool and like just kind of use like a black brush and try to add in shadows. The thing is like you can get it wrong cause like you're not using the natural lighting in the image. So it sometimes has the like, it looks a little bit like hand drawn, like not the best. Where the truth is when you're using this method, it's really just dodging and bur burning the image, which means that you're just taking what's already there and making it more pronounced, which means like the lighting is going to be spot on every single time. So going through... And adding some lighting like that. And now we're going to do the same for this part. And then this is going to be the interesting part, is just there's so much dynamic lighting here on this left arm, so it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. So you can see through here, just a really great effect. Making these shadows and this lighting more pronounced. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you drop a like. I would really appreciate it. Every single video, we try to get to like around 50 likes. So if we're not at 50 likes yet, then do me a favor and drop a like on the video. It helps out a lot. But yeah, that lighting is starting to look great. And then the nice thing is like, if I wanna go through and add more shadows, I can simply click down here and add in shadows to my image and actually I'm gonna go through and just name these shadows and highlights just so I don't forget so going through just like that then might do a little bit to the Jersey but the Jersey will largely come back to later so going through and really making those creases pop. And I think this is really looking great so far. And then adding some lighting up here. Cool. So now let's take a step back and see where we're at. So you can see our highlights. That really made our image stand out. And then when you take out our shadows. So you can see we're already making great progress in making this image really feel more three dimensional. Now this next step I wanna do is simply grab this layer that we have our cutout and duplicate it and bring it to the top. I'm then gonna right click and hit convert to smart object, which essentially just combines our mask and the image without 
making it rasterized so that we're able to then just have our singular image with no mask. And then I'm going to hit filter, blur, Gaussian blur. A simple 6.2 seems to work great. And now I'm going to change my blending mode to linear dodge add. And you guessed it, create a clipping mask on our image. Now I can go down to our layer mask tool, our layer mask button, and hit alt and then click. And what that does is it automatically inverses our mask so that then we can go and paint on all of our areas. I'm then just gonna use my brush tool. And similar to what we did with the highlights, I'm just gonna go through and really make these highlights in his arms and face stand out a little bit more. So using that levels adjustment tool that we used, it's good for kind of subtle effects, but I find that this linear dodge add is a great way of adding more pronounced lighting. And this is what's gonna be great for the jersey itself, because when you're trying to like make subtle details to like this black jersey, um, there's not a lot of contrast there to boost up, but then using this method really adds some great lighting. So going through, and I think this is where it, it really makes the jersey stand out. And like these are small details where someone might not necessarily notice. You went through and added all these creases to the jersey and like really went in and did like a good amount of detail work here. But the thing is like it feels more pronounced, it feels better. And it's one of those things that will take your design work from maybe like a basic level to extremely more advanced just by adding in the shading technique. When I see designers that like take a huge jump, like going from like very just basic fundamental design work to all of a sudden they're putting out insane designs, one of the biggest things that I see is that they just really get good at shading. So now we want to do the same thing here on the face. Just going through. And you can see it doesn't take too much of a brush to get to where we want to be. Now you could definitely overdo this effect and make it look bad, but I find that just subtle changes are what works best. And I guess we can go through and do some of the smaller details here in the ear. Now this is looking really great. Now let's group everything together so we can see how much progress we've made. So you can see already great progress being made with this cutout. Now I just want to do one more thing to finish up this image. I'm going to simply duplicate this cutout again, bring it to the top, add it as a clipping mask. And this time I want to do filter, other, high pass. Now that creates this kind of outlined effect. I'm going to hit OK and then change my blending mode to overlay. Now what that does is it allows me to add some more sharpening to my image, but I'm simply going to turn my fill down to about 40% because I find that if you do it at 100% fill, it seems a little bit over the top. So you can see just subtle sharpening within his hair right here. But overall, I'm really satisfied with the way this has turned out. So that's it guys, that's how I recreated this lighting in Adobe Photoshop. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like, it would seriously help out so much. And if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. We put out videos just like this every single week and we've got lots of content coming out very soon so I'm pretty sure you guys won't want to miss out on that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.